Welcome to day five with my Mustang and today I'm going to show you guys ground driving, how to introduce it and why I enjoy doing it and why it's important. And I also might work a little bit on touching the hind end again, maybe picking up those front feet and just seeing where we get to with that. And that's pretty much going to be all I do for that very first session. So as you can see, I have the Sir single on him already. So I'm just gonna send him out and let him move a little bit. Good boy. Good. The other thing I think I wanna work on is kind of like when we're leading, doing a little bit of like a jump response to see what his reaction is when he spooks. I'll show you guys what I mean by that. Good, and we're just gonna do walk trot right now because when we're long lining today, we're either just gonna do the walk or we might do a little bit of trot. Kinda depends what gate he goes into. Good boy. Good, yield the hindquarters. Good. So I gave him some time there to respond and I had a softer takeoff. When they are thinking about it, I try to just slow down and ask without increasing my pressure a crazy amount. And this is something I like to do right before I put the lines on to ground drive, just to remind them what it's like to have a rope behind their hind end, because it's gonna happen. So this snaking technique I'm doing right now with the rope is really good for sensitive horses as well. Just making sure that you're able to touch them all over without focusing on getting it around behind them quite yet. And then I'm gonna ask his nose to tip, release a little bit, cause he tipped his nose. Continue asking, there we go, good boy. So long lining today is really gonna help with that response he's giving me when his hind end is completely to me. I'm gonna start working my way back at his body from a distance. By being able to keep his feet still, I can release at the right times and he can get comfortable quicker. So right here, I'm gonna work on a little bit of snaking on that side since that was kind of scaring him. He did give to it with his head. Oh, I think that was the other way, sorry buddy. No, maybe it was this way. So we have some anticipation there, so I'm just gonna wait. Catch his eye. Thank you. Thank you. So this is where that snaking technique can kinda come in handy. Good boy. There we go. We'll do one more time on that side. Since that response was good, but it took a little while to get there. This is definitely his more difficult direction to do this on since this is his more guarded and or unsure side. Tip the nose. Good boy. Good boy. There, that one was nice, good job. I'm basically gonna ask him to give to one way and then the other way. And I will tell you that they may get tangled up once or twice when doing this. It does help sometimes to have a person at the head. That can help guide them. However, with Mustangs, sometimes that's a little bit different. So first thing I'm gonna do is just ask him to go forward. Good, no pressure on either side. I'm not asking for turning. Good. And I'm just gonna stick with him. Good boy. 
I don't care too much if it's at the walk or the trot right now. So the things that we've done to prep, of course the belly rope prepped for the surf single and then we did the giving behind the hindquarters. We've also done flexing with him, which is essentially one of the starting steps for a one rein stop. The other starting step is yielding the hindquarters, which we did pretty early on as well. So now we're going to add pressure from both sides. Good boy. That was a perfect test. He just turned in there, so I added pressure to the outside rein to turn him back. So now I'm going to ask him to slow down with both reins. Good boy, and see if I can get a halt from him. Good boy, and release for a little bit. So now I'm kind of standing in this position a little bit further back on him. Good. And I can get him comfortable to me being a little bit more behind him. So I can even go into more of a ground driving position where I'm at like a 45 degree angle to his hindquarters. I didn't ask for a turn there, so I'm going to turn him back. I know you guys couldn't see that, but as soon as he turned, I made sure I had slack in my hands and then just applied some pressure to the left one again to get him to turn back and track the same way. I'm going to ask him to change now. Good. And he's allowed to trot out of it a little bit. Good. Of course, the goal is to get him relaxed and more settled with it, but you can't expect him to be perfect the first few times. Good boy. So we had some response there to him giving to that outside line. I'm going to ask him to slow down. You can see him moving his head side to side, trying to figure out what I'm looking for. Good. As soon as he stops, I'm going to release. The reason I really like ground driving is because it is preparing them to ride under saddle. I guess you could call it ground driving or long lining. I probably do it more the uh, ground drive fashion, which is just straight steering and halting. Boy, that noise was him going over a tarp. I put his food on a tarp yesterday. I never even showed him the tarp, never introduced it to him. Just put his food on it, and of course I watched him for a couple minutes to make sure he was going to be curious, investigate, and actually eat, because I didn't want him not eating all night. But it's a good way to get him to kind of desensitize himself a bit. So I ask him to turn to the outside. Good. And then again, turn to the outside. Good. And again, turn to the outside. Good. So sometimes repetition can help them get a little bit more comfortable with what we're doing rather than good forcing them to stay slow, make their mind do something. It's similar to lunging where you don't want a horse just to run mindlessly. It's better to get them thinking by doing changes of speed, changing the direction they're going. Good boy. Good. And now I'm going to ask for a halt. Ooh. As soon as he halts, I'm going to release. Good boy. And I'm going to walk up to him a little bit. Good. Happy with that distance right there, so I'll back up. I don't want him thinking about drawing in, which he's really thinking about doing right now. So if he does move his feet, I'll just add pressure to that rope that tips to the outside. Good boy. Good. This is something I did a lot of with Boo. I think I might even have some videos doing this with her. Boo was my 2019 Florida Extreme Mustang makeover horse. Good boy. Boo definitely had more of a fear factor than this guy right here. Go ahead. Good. I think I might save working on the hind feet for another video. I was able to pick them up with the rope 
yesterday or the day before and work with them. But I think I'd rather just work on this for a couple more minutes. Good boy. Get it really solid and give him the release for the first session there because I'm happy with how he's starting to think through it and progressing. I decided to record part of this session because I think I'm gonna introduce him to the Western Saddle today and originally I was just gonna kinda of do it this afternoon and not really record and just show you guys the progress the next day but I figured it might be fun for you guys to see his initial reaction to it because it is a lot louder and clunkier than an English saddle and I'm able to show you guys how I usually introduce the saddles when they're not my uh, nice English ones. I'm gonna let him just look at it on the ground for a while, check it out. Good boy. Usually the saddle pad difference isn't too big because it is a similar object going across them and it's not super heavy weight. I think my saddle's gonna sit at an awkward place on this dude and I don't know if I'll be able to uh, use the rear cinch on him because it may not go tight enough. Good boy. Good. I'm gonna back up and let him think about it. Super. Good. Super. I'm gonna pull this leather piece out from this side and I'll get it more situated on him and in a better spot. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Very nice. Good, so I'll probably just scrub through this tacking up part because you guys have seen that I've already prepped him to stand still quite a bit during this process. So there shouldn't be too much of a reaction. To punch some more holes in that rear cinch and in my breastplate and probably get a smaller cinch. Good boy. Good boy. As much as I really want him to feel that rear cinch, I think I'm gonna take it off because I'm not comfortable with the amount of gap it's creating. All right, let's see it. Good boy. Look at this little pro. Good boy, there we go. Good. And I do think it's really important to work on the walk while lunging too, not just the trot and the canner. Because when I get on my horse, I need to make sure that they're able to feel comfortable at the walk as well. Good boy. That was very nice. Good job. But we will see you in the next video.